right, you guys ready for the couch? I am. So, zip ties, these are actually longer than the ones I usually use, so I might not even need two, but I'm going to do two just because I don't feel like redoing it again. So, make it long, put up the cushion, find a handle inside, let me show you in case you've never done a super sofa before, which is good for you. So, there's a little handle. I'm just going to set this guy right inside here. You'll notice he comes out underneath. We are going to gonna clip these together. Oh, actually, I actually did need to make it tight. It doesn't have to be like ripping tight, but like obviously the tighter you can make it, the better. That's what she said. So these actually aren't super flimsy pillows, so I'm gonna leave them in here. Um, actually never mind. We're gonna hand truck it. We could four wheel with it if it was a bigger elevator, but it's not. So, hand truck it is. Now, I've talked about this on numerous videos where I talk about moving couches by yourself or with somebody, doesn't really matter. You always wanna grab it by the back end of the couch. So, I'll show you. So this is the back side of the couch. This typically is the flattest and the most stable because you have the support bars of the wood inside of it and that's perfect when you have a tall hand truck. If I grab it from the back side, the problem with that is one, there's a bed there, so there's gonna be pressure pushing against it. It's not gonna be stable and typically you're not gonna fake it through a door. So grab it from the back side. We're gonna push up on the couch just a little so I can slide the hand truck underneath without stopping the floor. And then we're just gonna grab the couch up here where you can't see. Lean back a bit. Now, notice I'm not touching the piece. You don't have to. You can hold this. It's okay. Hell, I can balance it there for a second. Now. I might be able to make it out the door going straight, but probably not because there's a hallway there. So I'm actually gonna go back backwards and I'll show you why. Sometimes you just got to go on an angle. So I drew you guys a very crude diagram of the explanation with the elevator and a larger couch. A typical three-seater couch is about seven to eight feet long, unless it's like an extended one, sometimes a little shorter, but roughly seven to eight feet is your typical length of a three-seater sofa. Now, when you have that up on a hand truck, for example, you automatically just add it a few inches because now it's off the ground on something with usually six to eight inch wheels so to kind of give you guys an idea here is a very poorly drawn diagram of me with a couch in the elevator now i was gracious with the elevator's length which is about six feet usually they're probably a little shorter than that probably closer to five realistically but i did a nine foot height so i was being a little gracious with that as well but it's more for picture purposes so here's me here's a couch the couch is about seven to eight feet long Let's just go ahead and say that if I was holding that couch on a diagonal with it sticking out from the back of me to the tip of the couch, it's probably a little closer to seven feet in length. You have to treat it like a right uh, triangle. So you have your 
A side, your B side, and then your C side. Your C side is always your longest side. So you have to remember that when you're here. So this little line indicates the door of the elevator. That's the height. So you have a nine foot height, but the door is all the way down here. Now you can even see as I'm lining up with this, it's not gonna clear right through the door. So you have to dip down no matter what. Now, if we go forward with it, if I'm seven feet long in length and the elevator is six, if I go straight with it, even dropping it down, which I'm just increasing my overall length here, this tip of the couch is gonna hit the back of the elevator before I clear the door, right? There's an extra foot difference. That's a very real scenario. So if I were to return around, I'll show you what that looks like. So my drawing skills got even worse, but essentially what you're doing is you're flipping around and going backwards. But as you come in with the piece, you're gonna stand the piece up and then set it down if you want to, or if you have enough room, you can just hold it in place either by holding it up top or keeping your foot on the axle so it doesn't want to slide forward or backwards. But all you're simply doing is pulling the piece in closer to you as you come up and then you're setting it in place and you can get out all the same. So instead of going in straight with the piece staying in that right triangle, now you're gonna squeeze it into where you're more of an acute triangle. So it can be helpful and there's honestly, I don't think I've ever gone forward with the couch before into an elevator unless it's one of those huge ones that you can just look at and know, okay, I can definitely just go in straight this way. But it's also typically easier to go in backwards because it's easier to push the couch, the couch back out where you can look where you're going versus having to sit there and look behind you to make sure no one's there behind the door, pull the piece down and then watch the top door and wiggle your way out and then stand it up out in the hallway where you typically have people around. So it's usually easier to go inwards. But I hope that gives you guys an idea and that helps a little bit. Um, in my situation, the elevator height wasn't quite where you would typically see. So sometimes you have to go on a diagonal and kind of hold it in place. All you're doing is making use of the extra space in the elevator. Treat it like a really big box. You try to get a stick in there. The stick won't go in straight. But if you turn it on a diagonal, usually from point to point in a box, it's usually biggest. Or if you need to kind of slide in because it's a little bit more of a rectangle, then you would go in there this way and sit down. So it's all just using angles and techniques to kind of operate. And that's what movers do. And that's what you can do too. So hopefully that gives you guys an idea. Try it out a few times. Get a couch. The next time you have a couch that's a little bit more stable and easy to operate, especially if it's lightweight, practice it a few times even if you know you can get in going straight go ahead and go backwards and just see if it's easier give it a shot you can also just practice this with the general door so for example if i'm going out of a bedroom into a fairly spacious hallway but maybe it's not a super long hallway i might want to go backwards with the piece and stand it up and just kind of shimmy it this way and then go out versus trying to go forward with it, you're gonna have the same issue. You're gonna hit the other hallway wall before you clear your door frame, especially the lower the door frame is, typically the farther down the couch needs to come, which means that you're going from something like this that's seven feet long, but maybe only four feet wide. The more you bring that couch down, the longer the piece gets on the surface. So you have to keep that in mind. The lower the clearance, the longer the couch is gonna become. So you wanna make sure you can maximize that room. So using the height by swooping upwards can really help. So hopefully that gives you guys an idea. Try it out, let me know how it works.